reality. Hi, I'm Derek at Reality, and today we'll be demonstrating the RTC360 from Leica Geosystems. In this video, I'll be walking you through how to use the RTC360 on a typical scan of an office building. We'll be scanning the outside perimeter as well as one of the floors. With the RTC360, scanning this large site is a one-person job. I'm carrying everything that I need to complete this project in this one backpack. We begin by setting up the sturdy carbon fiber Gitzel tripod specifically designed for the RTC360. A survey tripod would also work with an adapter, but it's not necessary for this job, so I've chosen the more portable option. The Gitzel tripod is easy and intuitive to use. With the twist lock mechanisms on the legs and the friction joints at the top, you can easily adjust the tripod's height and its footprint. The next step is to remove the scanner from its case and attach it to the tripod, which is easy to do with this built-in quick connector. The quick connector and locking mechanism are unique to the RTC360. I turn on the scanner with the simple press of a button. It will take just a few seconds to boot up. Because the RTC360 has a built-in inclinometer that is accurate to 18 degrees, it's always ready to go without the need to level the scanner with a bubble. While the RTC360 is starting, I can take out my iPad and open the Cyclone Field 360 app, which I'll use to control the scanner and also to view the data I collect. Cyclone Field 360 is compatible with both iOS and Android devices, so you can use almost any tablet or phone to remotely control your scanner. After creating a new project in the app, and adjusting my preferred settings for this job, all I have to do is press play, and we're already taking our first scan. Depending on the settings you choose, the scan can take as little as 26 seconds. For these captures, we're collecting low resolution scans, which is often plenty, and taking photos. This will take a minute and 26 seconds. While I'm circling to avoid being seen in the resulting data, the scanner will turn 180 degrees to collect the dome scan. Once done, it will turn an additional 360 degrees, stopping 12 times to collect the HDR imagery. Almost immediately upon finishing the two operations, a truncated version of the scan will appear in the app, enough for you to get your bearings. Your setup locations will appear as red dots on the map and you can now see the scanner's location on the map when moving to its next setup location. The scanner will track its location from one spot to the next using the various sensors that are built in. After the second scan is done, you'll want to confirm the automatically generated position by clicking Quick Link and then move on to the next. With this workflow, scanning even the most intimidating site becomes a simple and straightforward process. Mastering the RTC360 is easy even for beginners with little previous experience. The scanner uses two batteries at once, but if you still have a bit of power left, you can hot swap the batteries one at a time without the need to reboot. If you miss the opportunity to do so, you'll need to reboot the scanner and it will have lost its position. That's not a big deal though, since you can easily manually align the first new scan to the previous group and then the rest will fall. Remember, if you're not using Cyclone Field 360, the RTC360 will still track its position between scans and be able to use that information in the registration on the computer. However, if you are using the app, You'll have time between scans to check the automatically generated constraints and therefore spend less time after the fact piecing your scans together. You can also use the time in between scans to collect geotags. With geotags, you can attach pictures, audio or video recordings, documents, etc. to the 3D space that is your point cloud project, making it a rich 3D visual database of your site. The data is always stored on the USB key that is in the scanner and not on the device you are controlling it with. When your scans are done, you can immediately pull out the USB key and start importing your scan data to your computer. For this job, we'll import directly into Cyclone Register 360. You'll notice that you can drag and drop the data in the program. Make sure to include the folder with your setups as well as the file called project.rtc360. The red dots represent your setup locations and the red lines represent constraints. With Auto Align selected, these scans will align automatically by the software, but you can add additional constraints if you like. Next, we click the import button. Register360 will now analyze our raw data and convert it into its own native file format. 
This process will vary in time depending on how many scans you took and how fast your computer is. When this is done, we'll see a screen very similar to the one we were looking at before, except that we are now no longer working with our raw data. We can double check and optimize our constraints here and create new constraints if necessary. When I'm confident that everything lined up properly, I click on the accept button. The next step is to accept the sitemap that is shown. Under the publish options, I can choose from any number of common point cloud file formats for my final deliverable. In this case, I'm going to export an LGS file, which I can then send to the client with the free TrueView app. I'll also include the registration report so that they can see how well this job was registered. We look into Cyclone Register 360 and Cyclone Field 360 more in depth in other videos. Check out the notes below for more details and be sure to follow us on social media to keep up to date on everything Reality Capture.